Well, we are starting to lose the daylight imagery of a monster of a hurricane moving toward the big bend of Florida. Again, if there is any type of silver lining, it's that the worst of the storm surge will be in the bend, which is a far uh, less dense of population. Most of the coastline from around Appalachia, Cola to almost Tampa, this is primarily marsh, so you don't have the large populations like you do across basically the rest of the coast of the state of Florida. But this is still going to be wide ranging impacts. Already much of the state is still getting inundated with some heavy rainfall, increasing winds, and the core of the storm is going to pass right over Tallahassee. Now at the moment, still at a three winds are at net. Well, it looks like we uh, see it, have seen an adjustment back up to 125 miles per hour. So it is right on the door of becoming a category four storm, and that is what is expected by the Hurricane Center. Now the forecasted points you see our icons are only 12 hours, so the landfall falls within those forecasted points, which is why you see it as a two here. Again, it's likely to make landfall as a four, but still will hold the strength of at least a category one as it passes over Atlanta Metro. I just did some searching. There has never been a hurricane, at least a storm at hurricane strength to pass over Metro Atlanta since records began in 1850. They've had numerous tropical storms, about 38, but never a hurricane to pass over Atlanta. And that is very possible because it will be moving inland again as a four and moving very, very quickly. So those hurricane warnings extend pretty far to the north. And I'm actually kind of surprised that Atlanta is not included. However, counties just to the south are included right now, meaning the winds are going to be very far reaching much farther north than we usually see from these storms. And the rainfall is also going to be a major uh, impact from Atlanta. Well, really much of the state of Georgia, but also into the foothills and the Piedmont of the Appalachian. So this is going to be a big rainmaker. Impacts are going to be very widespread, and it'll be interesting to see what kind of recovery efforts are needed in the Atlanta area and beyond. But just kind of highlighting some of the major metropolitan areas being impacted. Tornado warnings and watches have been and rampant as this is continuing to strengthen. Now our forecast again is calling for it to be a four at landfall. As for us, dry air already on the backside of the upper low and Helene, uh, Helene, so we are in great shape. May see some wraparound clouds as the remnants of Helene kind of push through the Tennessee Valley. But aside from that, it looks like we are going to stay under mostly sunny skies and beautiful weather. Now beside Helene, we also had Isaac form, not going to threaten land. We have Invest 90 with a high chance of developing this too looks like if it becomes Joyce, which will likely uh, happen, is going to also stay out over the open water. The area that we're going to be watching next weekend is something that again is not even there. Models have been sniffing out something trying to move in from the Caribbean, maybe toward the Bay of Campeche, but again, kind of like the early stages of Helene, it is just far too soon to know what, if anything, is going to happen. Hopefully for us, we'll start to get some more cold fronts, which are then kind of put an end to that threat. Kind of a fine grading between the cloudy skies associated with Helene and our sunshine. And that grading kind of was right along the Mississippi coast as that storm moves a bit farther inland. It's taking a lot of the cloud cloudiness with it. And we've been under mostly sunny skies all day today. Really has been a gorgeous afternoon. High temperatures, though, still were able to get into the mid, some upper 80s. Our current reading is 85. Today's high was 86. So still right at about average for this time of year. But that less humid air has really Really made it feel very comfortable. 80s right now, but with dew points in the 50s and low 60s and falling tomorrow morning will be even cooler. So we are anticipating a much more pleasant start to the day tomorrow. Even this morning felt pretty nice, even nicer tomorrow morning. And again, looking at 60s to start the day on Saturday and on Sunday, gradually warming a little bit, but still that low humid air hanging around. Also gradually the humidity coming back up, but we'll still call it less humid. I'll call it less muggy because the humidity will continue to rise, but still not uncomfortable as we head toward the end of September and the start of October.